Okay, what I think I'm planning on doing here is just make some very, I guess, casual videos on painting. Try and give some insight about what I'm doing. Uh, this is a Toyota Sienna, an offender and a door. I found it easier just to take everything off. So I ended up doing two jobs in the booth at one time here. Just bringing some sealer. Uh, paint gun that I'm using is the Luma 3 Exodus OP. I like the OP a lot more than the HVLP. An HVLP style gun, uh, just too slow for me. I find the OP lays it down real nice. And just sprays a lot better for my style of painting. Check out what we've on this door. Holding the gun sideways so that fan pattern is just kind of naturally blending out that sealer. It's an easy way to just get a nice soft edge no matter what you do. <clears throat> Using a little bit of spot blender with some car rep stuff. I find it sprays really nice. Works really well. Just trying to fade in that sealer edge as best I can. But yeah, get your sealer on. Move about four to five inches away from the panel. <clears throat> Let that flash off. Read your tech sheets. Call it 10 to 15 minutes is good general rule, depending on the temperature. But uh, yeah, gonna slap the Sun Pro light on. You can see I got two guns there. Don't forget to tack everything off in between every job. Before you spray sealer, after, between coats of base, you name it. Lightly, lightly hold that tack rag. You don't want to put too much pressure on it. I just kind of the weight of my hand essentially and you can kind of feel any sand piling from the material you're using or any like dirt nips you kind of wipe it a little bit more and it'll almost like you're sanding it it should come off if it doesn't you might actually have to sand it and this fancy little tool right here is an anti-static gun i always blow off the panels with an anti-static gun helps uh helps keep the dust off everything especially with plastic Plastics are really staticky. I'm not a big fan of that. So I just kind of blow everything off. It might blow off any loose dust while we're at it too. Put everything away in that spray case, nice and safe. Don't forget to close the door. This is the base coat using PPG and Viral Base. Paint coat 1H1. Trying to get the metallics on this color is tough to lay down. But I'm not ever going to stop just dead stop in the middle of the door right at the in my blend area i'm kind of pulling away at the same time i'm releasing the trigger and just giving it all at the same time just giving it a slight flick i'm not necessarily spraying straight across the panel super per perpendicular but just a nice slight flick at the very end after i've released the trigger just to try and feather out that blend as best i can <clears throat> getting the edges some people get really worked up if you don't do the edges first I don't really care any wet paint is going to melt into another wet paint area just be careful not to get any hangers on the edge so whatever suits you painting from the top to the bottom again I don't really care paint however you want to paint if you want to start at the top and work your way down be my guest if you want to start from the bottom work your way up be my guest Got this sweet welcome blower. Use it to dry the waterborne base coat. Works pretty good. I also have blowers on the, the booth walls that I can, uh, there's magnets on it so I can stick them somewhere and just point them at the job and turn on the fans and I can actually walk out of the booth and let it do its thing. This job was small enough where I was like, I don't need to, I just blow it my hand and it is what it is. kind of see I'm blending right into the middle right now the second coat I'm gonna go a little bit further on the blend there but you want to make sure everything's fully dehydrated otherwise yeah, you just might have to wait a lot longer if you're going really wet on wet then you kind of risk clear coat delamination you don't want that down the road that's for sure Definitely the quickest way to 
do is to pull it by hand if you can and keep an eye and then as soon as you know it's good and dry it flashes off it goes from being glossy wet looking all the way to looking matted and, and dry then you can get right back on the job time is money after all so speed and efficiency is super key that's why I like those blowers I have on the booth walls they uh do a lot of a car at one time and then I'll still take this little welcome blower and kind of blow in where it seems to need it the most <clears throat> my booth is an old cross draft booth that was converted into a semi down so sometimes the bottom of the cars take longer to dry just the way the air flows in where if it was just a straight up down draft the air would flow right across the whole side of the car and down through the floor. There. Put that back in the spray case. Keep everything clean. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Definitely the number one thing you want to worry about is being a clean person and having clean jobs. Yeah, just that's the other job. It's just a, a bumper, fender, Toyota RAV4 paint code 202 just straight black I'm gonna tack everything off real good here so I don't have any of that fine overspray from the black definitely didn't want to put the black and this gray metallic on opposite ends of where they are now because then I might have actually I know I'd have metallics in my black paint I just definitely didn't want that I kind of set things up so I have the best result when we're trying to do two opposite colors in the booth. If it was downdraft, it wouldn't matter as much where, what goes where. Just keep things far enough apart. Everything goes down, but everything goes to the back here, so i got to be worried about it. But tacking it off again, blowing it off again, keeping things clean. Anti-static gun. Very expensive, but when you paint for a living, you paint professionally, every little bit helps. Less time on the polisher denibbing is, is pretty key for me. Get you a different camera angle here. You can kind of see where the sealer was. You don't notice that after you get enough coats of base coat on there. You won't see the metallics oriented differently. As long as you laid it down smooth, as smooth as you want your end result to be, that's where you want to start. Don't spray your sealer so that it's super orange peely and rough and dry. And I'm kind of blending closer to the door handle. The reason for that, I'm just trying to use objects within the door to uh, hide my color if it's under a mirror or body line or whatnot. Um, <clears throat> this color, uh, two coat coverage, I highly recommend on this 1H1 with EnviroBase. You do a orientation coat after your second coat dries it will be tough to lay down nice because I find that this style of color they're very prone to mottling which if you've seen that it kind of looks like your metallics are kind of bunching up and not laying down the way they should <clears throat> not ideal you can avoid that you can avoid that with a orientation coat which is kind of like a standard coat here where I'm four to five inches and 75% overlap but I'm going to probably go just a little bit further away and making sure I have a really consistent overlap probably about six inches away and not much farther back lay that down and get your metallics orienting the way you want and then you still have to put another coat on top but it's not a heavy coat it's just a control coat you can use the control coat to also help orient your metallics and you kind of use it as well to help blend your color out a bit more too. I find with these difficult colors um, you do an orientation coat you mix your remaining color 50-50 with your wet bed just like a clear base coat and you kind of essentially put in a blend within your paint cup and I find that it helps also orient the metallics a lot better than than even 
just like the standard way you do an orientation coat. You kind of lay it on a little bit heavier if you really want it, but same kind of spray technique. It just, I don't know, 50-50 mix of wet bed is definitely the way to go. There's a pink and I'm using the Fuji Spray MP V8. Similar gun to that Exodus that I have. Not that it's the same gun at all, but just the style. It's not an HBLP. It's kind of like a, how would I explain that? A low volume, medium pressure paint gun. LVMP. That's that's the style of gun that I like. Technoprolates are a lot like that too. The uh, Vilbis GPG. It's all about the same. Here's the beauty of this Sun Pro Light <clears throat> that's attached to the, uh, the Fuji gun. I'm checking for coverage here, making sure that everything looks like a million bucks. That I don't have anything that's too transparent. This light is sunlight correct. Use a lot of check and coverage. Make sure you get your edges. I use it also to not only see better in the booth. I've kind of gotten used to it now. Um, checking for color matches outside of the booth. You got some paint chips or whatnot. Works really good for that. Mimic sunlight. Now here's where you do a orientation coat. Do the 50-50 mix of that wet bed and just blend it out a little bit further. Never have issues. On this job, everything looked good. I avoided that coat completely. Uh, I wish I didn't, but it still turned out good enough. And then control coat, 90% overlap and just light drop the pressure. I'd spray it 20, drop it down to 15. Uh, these tough colors do a double control coat. So I'll spray it once here and then I'll do it a second time. If your control coat looks wet, you've done it wrong. You don't want to do that. You just want to kind of dust it on. I'm working fast. I'm probably 12 inches away from the panel. But yeah, I let that sit five minutes or so and then I start spraying clear coat. It doesn't need to be, yeah, there's the other job. Just painted that fender on the stand. Didn't want to hang it up. I wanted to keep things away. You can see the filters in the top of the booth there. Tack everything off just in case. There's some sort of metallics that were floating over there. Shouldn't be because the air is flowing away from those parts. Used Omni Plus on here because it's just straight black. Solvent board, it's more economically priced. Definitely a good idea to have two systems in your shop, I think. Save some money here and there. Probably saves us a third of our paint cost. I spent years and years spraying out cards to see what Omni Plus colors work good, and yeah, definitely found the ones that I know I can and cannot do. Pulling off the bumper with the anti-static gun. Don't want to have any of that dust hanging around. <clears throat> this bumper kind of sucked. There's a lot of little edges. Lots of little grill areas that you got to get into. If you can't get it from the front, don't try and push it with, say, your clear coat. Try and get it from the backside. Might have better access. A way better chance of avoiding a paint run or from the backside. Decided to pull out the old uh, Techna Copper. This gun's got to be oh, at least 20, if not more, 25 years old. Haven't really used it in a long time since I got the Luma Exodus guns. I really like those. Those are probably my favorite ones. That Fuji spray is also a really nice one. It's just heavy custom to the, the Exodus. The Exodus is like probably the second lightest paint gun on the market next to like those Walcom paint guns, which are made of carbon fiber, I believe. So they're super lightweight. But I didn't have my light here and I was like, this is weird not having a light right where I need it. 
we want to keep an eye on how far you are from your panel. Watch what you're doing through the booth lights. So as you're spraying, you're looking at the booth lights through the clear coat. See how it's laying down. You'll know pretty quick if you're going too heavy. Because uh, you might have a bit of run indicators as you go. If you didn't get it the first time in a tough area, you don't have to work fast, take your time. You don't need to rush and panic. You can always get it the second time, especially if it's an area where you're just not gonna have sunlight hitting it. The clear coat essentially is gonna give you UV protection for your base coat and it's gonna make it look shiny. Like everybody wants shiny paint. That's kind of like the two main purposes of clear. So if you can't get in that fog light pocket the first time perfectly, get it the second round and it'll be fine. Even if you only had one coat of clear in there. I'll even avoid doing my edges sometimes just because you don't need two coats of clear. Like not my edges, edges, but I guess the, the jams door only needs one coat of clear on the inside doesn't see any sunlight just needs to be shiny and even that manufacturers they don't really do a good job putting a lot of clear on there anyways this hose I always try and keep it as straight as possible so it doesn't wrap itself around like it is right here didn't pay that close of attention obviously it's not the end of the world gonna hit the jams here spray the outside and four to five inches away. Clear is sprayed at 22 PSI, 75% overlap. There's a sweet spot that you, you learn with time. Figure it out. You make a lot of mistakes, you learn from them. If you make a mistake, don't do it again. That's how you learn, that's how you get better. Knowing your limits as a painter, knowing your limits of the product you're using, of the equipment you're using, goes a long way the edges here first hit the edges second I don't really care just don't get runs and hangers off the edges it doesn't really matter it's all going to melt in at the end of the day but yeah I don't know hopefully you guys took some value from this I know it's uh, not the most formal video it's kind of just some ramblings of mine but if you like it let me know if you like this kind of video I think I can produce a few more of these and keep throwing in these little tidbits of information if that's possible so yeah follow along